Welcome to Similarity Podcast. All right, so this is an introduction to similarity. So two figures are similar if the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are proportional. Right, so both things have to be true. Um, for our similar figures, there's always there is a sequence of similarity transformations. that maps one figure to the other. And this will always include a dilation. It might include a rotation, a reflection, and a translation as well, but it has to include a dilation. All right? So let's take a look at some similar figures and how to figure out if figures are not similar. All right, so similar figures have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size, and the following properties. All right, so it's not enough to say the same shape, um, but different size, because that, that's, that's not precise enough. Right? What do you mean, same shape? Right? Um, so we have to be very precise when we're describing similar figures. So our corresponding sides have to be in proportion. So that means that the ratios of the corresponding sides are equal. Remember when we were working with our scale factors with dilations, right, we, would, we, we would use um, the corresponding pair of sides and figure out the scale factor. right? Well, that has to be the same scale factor for every pair of corresponding sides for two figures to be, purport to be uh, similar, for their sides to be proportional. And then secondly, our corresponding angles have to be congruent. Over on the board there is the, is the symbol for similar. And it looks like the symbol for congruent, but it doesn't have the equal, because the measures are not necessarily equal. So although the size of the two shapes can be different, the sizes of the two shapes must differ by a factor. And this is known as the scale factor. So every pair of corresponding sides has to differ by that same scale factor. Congruent is a special type of similar. Your scale factor is just one. So if you have two congruent figures and you're asked if they're similar, yes, they're similar. Um, their scale factor is one. So not only are they similar, they have the exact same measures. So let's take a look at two similar figures here. First, let's take a look at the angles, and then we'll take a look at the, the sides. All right, so I have them sort of color-coded, so the, the orange sides go together, and the pink sides go together, and the yellow sides go together, and the purple and the green, right? So, so it's color-coded for you. Um, and if we take a look at our angles here, uh, so notice angle, um, angle R and angle... Let's, actually, let's start with angle P. Angle P and angle J are congruent. Right? They both have three little marks in them. And angle Q and angle K are congruent. They both have two marks. And angle R and angle L are congruent. They're both 26 degrees. Angle S and angle M are congruent. They both have one little mark. And then angle T and angle N are congruent because they're both right angles. Right? So all the angles are congruent, but that's not enough. We have to also make sure the sides are in proportion because we can have two figures that have the corresponding angles congruent and aren't in proportion. All right, so let's figure out if we have the same scale factor. All right, to, to figure out if your sides are in proportion, you're going to match the corresponding sides. This is kind of easy because they're color coded. All right, so and if I'm just trying to figure out if the two figures are similar, it doesn't matter who's the pre-image and who's the image. Right? I uh, just pick one. I'll just put. I'll put the. I'll put the little figure, the R, the PQRST. I'll put that in the numerator, and I'll put the other one, the JKLMN. I'll put that one in the denominator. Okay. So we're gonna have RS goes with LM. Right? So the measure of RS is 2, and the measure of LM is 3. So every other pair of sides has to be in the exact same proportion. So let's work through the rest of the sides. So we have ST and MN. ST is 4, MN is 6, and if we reduce, that's 2 thirds. All right, moving right along, we have PT and uh, JN. 
and PT is 5, and JN is 7.5. Let's reduce that. So if we were to multiply by 10, we'd get rid of that decimal. So 5 times 10 is 50, and 7.5 times 10 is 75, and those can reduce. It's kind of like 2 quarters and 3 quarters. That reduces to 2 thirds. They're both divisible by 25. All right, moving along, we've got two more pairs of sides. So we have QP corresponds with um, KJ, and QP is 3, KJ is 4.5. Again, we'll multiply by 10, so that would be 30 and 45, and they're both divisible by 15. So 30 divided by 15 is 2, and 45 divided by 15 is 3. And then last pair of sides is QR and KL. And QR is 6, and KL is 9, and they're both divisible by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So notice we have the very same, all of our sides are in the exact same proportion. They are all in a ratio of 2 thirds. I forgot to mention, but follow along in your notes. Some of these things are for you to fill out. I just don't have the notes in front of me, uh, but I think you'll figure out when you see that. When you see something in your notes that's up here, you should write it down. Uh, and there are some things I may star um, and have you um, add that, even if it's not in your notes. All right, so notice here all of our sides are in proportion. They're all in uh, a ratio of two-thirds. All of our corresponding or angles are congruent. Therefore, our figures have to be similar. So we can say TSRQP is similar to NMLKJ. And we can write lots of similarity statements, right? So long as we match the corresponding sides, it doesn't matter the order that we go in. So I could say, maybe I'll start with, I'll start with P, right? So I could say P, I'm going to go the other direction too. I'm going to say PTS. R, Q. All right, so long as I match up the corresponding parts and I go in order, I can't go you know, zipping across the figure. Uh, so P, that would be J, N, M, L, K. All right, so there's lots of ways to write our similarity statement. In the statement of proportionality, any pair of ratios forms a true proportion. So all of our sides here in a proportion are in a proportion of two thirds. We can use this proportion to find the measure of any unknown sides in a pair of similar figures. So maybe we know two figures are similar, and we have, two, we have a pair of corresponding sides, so we know maybe the ratio is 2 thirds. We can use that fact to find the measure of uh, other sides. Right? And that's actually what we'll be doing in the next lesson. All right, let's continue on. <coughs> Excuse me. So when changing the size of a figure, will the angles of a figure also change? So I actually have two similar triangles here, and I think you see it moving. <laughs> so if you notice, I'm going to match up my sides here. So notice they're not the same size, but the angle measures are the same because they're similar. I notice there's 70 degrees, and that matches up. There's 40, that matches up. There's 70, and that matches up. So then remember, the, si the sum of three angles in a triangle must add to 180 degrees. If the, si if the size of the angles were increased, the sum of the would, would exceed 180 degrees. And you can see that the smaller triangle fits perfectly into the larger triangle. So just because something is larger, it doesn't change the amount of degrees. That's the amount of larger. Doesn't mean there's any more turn. And you can see that those angle measures are the same. So increasing the size of something doesn't change these angle measures. All right, so we're going to decide whether this, the figures are similar. If so, write a similarity statement. When we're deciding, we have to match all corresponding angles and sides. All right, so if we're trying to determine whether they're similar, it has to be all of them. If we know they're similar, we're just asked the scale factor, for instance, it could be any pair. So we're going to match all corresponding angles and sides, and we'll check. Okay. So let's match up the angles first, and let's make sure that we have uh, four congruent angles. All right, so angle A here 
is congruent to, that's got two marks. So the one with two, two arcs in it is angle F. So angle A is congruent to angle F. Angle B is 74 degrees, and so is angle E. So they're both congruent. Uh, angle C has one, one arc in it, and H has one arc. So they're congruent. So we have uh, angle C is congruent to angle H. Um, uh, D is 122, and G is 122, so those are congruent. Angle D is congruent to angle G, and that's everybody. So we do have four pairs of angles that are congruent to one another, and I have it written down there as well. All right, so our angles match up. Um, our corresponding angles are congruent. Let's check to see if our sides are in proportion, because it's not enough to just have congruent angles. you got to have sides that are in proportion. All right, so... Uh, when you're trying to figure out how they go together, um, go from congruent angles to congruent angle. So, for instance, if I go from A, B, well, A is congruent to F and B is congruent to E, it has to be F, E. All right, so just use the angles to help you figure it out if you're not sure. All right, so A, B is 1.5 and F, E is 4.5. If we multiply, by, and by the way, if you're trying to figure out if they're similar, it doesn't matter who's, you know, who's in the numerator and who's in the denominator, right? So long as you're consistent, so long as I have, so I'm going to put this smaller figure, A, B, C, D, is going to be in the numerator, and um, E, F, G, H is going to be in the denominator, okay? So long as I'm consistent, it's fine. So I'm going to multiply by 10 to get rid of that decimal, and that makes us 15 over 45, and that reduces to one-third. So everybody else has to be in a proportion of one-third. All right, so now we'll go from B, B, C goes with F, G, wait, B, C, and sorry, E, H, E, H, B, C, E, H. All right, so B, C is 2, and... E H is six, and that's one third. All right, so now we've got C D and G H, or H G. All right, so C D and H G. C D is one. H G is three. So far, so good. We got one more pair of sides to look at. And that is A, uh, D, A, and G, F. And D, A is 2.5. And G, F is 7. And if I multiply by 10, I have 25 over 70. And that does reduce. Let me see if I can just move everybody over. Sorry. Ooh, doo -doo. <laughs> At least they're all staying together. There we go. All right, so they're, they're divisible by 5. Uh, so 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 70 divided by 5 is 14. Well, they're almost all in proportion, but notice that one of the pairs of sides is not in proportion, and it does have to be all of them. That's why we have to check every one of them, and if somebody's not in the same proportion, well, our figures aren't similar. So the figures are not similar here because the corresponding sides are not proportional. It's not enough to have three sets of sides in the same proportion and four angles congruent. It has to be all the sides in proportion, all the angles congruent. So this one didn't work out for us, all right? So let's take, so no statement of proportionality because, or no statement of similarity because, well, they're not similar. So we're gonna go on because we're done with this problem. And let's take a look at this one, decide if these figures are similar. All right, so we gotta make sure we've got congruent angles, first of all. All right, so angle A, I always start with angles because it's usually the easiest. Angle A is congruent to angle M. And then I also know how to set the sides up. Uh, angle B is congruent to angle L. Angle C is congruent to angle P. And angle D, are you congruent? Yes, you are, to angle N. So angle D is congruent to angle N. So we have all corresponding 
angles are congruent. So that's our first, that's our first check. Oh, I just can't fit that in. I wonder if I could move the whole problem over just a little bit. There we go. All corresponding angles are congruent. All right, let's see if our sides are in proportion. All right, so it'll be A, B is going to go with, um, let's see, 124 to 25 ML. So AB is 2.4 and ML is 7.5. Did I put those together quickly? Yeah, I think so. All right, so let's simplify that. We can multiply that by 10. We'll have 24 over 75. That does reduce. They're both divisible by 3. Uh, I don't know if they're divisible by anything else, but they're divisible by 3. Uh, so 24 divided by 3 is 8, and 75 divided by 3 is 25. Interesting number there. All right, so now we'll just work our way around. So BC corresponds with, who's next? PN, right? 20, wait. <laughs> so A, I went to AB, so 124 to 25, and then 25 to 164, LP. Okay, LP. i to make sure I got the right sides here. Um, otherwise, it definitely won't work out. So BC is 5, LP is, is 7.5. I'm still hoping I didn't, do, I didn't divide incorrectly there. No, <laughs> 75 divided by 3 is definitely 25. And I matched them up correctly. I didn't write down the wrong thing, right? Oh, I did write down the wrong thing. I'm sorry. Oop. I thought something didn't look right. And you know, I'm gonna color code this. So this will go a little faster, but I don't have to keep looking up back and forth and back and forth. So AB goes with this guy, ML. Sorry, it's 2.4 and 3.6. So that would be 24 over 36. We multiply by 10, and that is 2 thirds. Sorry about that. Now let's just color code the rest of them. So it gets kind of tiresome, keep sticking my head up. Um, B, C, and L, P, and C, D, and P, N. This is a good idea because sometimes you, you know, you're trying to go along the figure, and if they're not oriented the same way, sometimes you'd grab the wrong number. So there, they're all color-coded. That's why I color-coded the one in the beginning. All right, so 5 over 7.5 multiplied by 10. That's 50 over 75, and that's 2 thirds, right? 2 quarters and 3 quarters. Um, and then, that's right over here. Uh, who's next? CD over PN. I am so glad that I color-coded because it is a lot less tiresome. When you're trying to write numbers down. 4 or 6, and that reduces to 2 thirds. And then the last pair is DA. And DA is going with NN. And that is 2 and 3. So notice we have everybody's in the exact same proportion. Right? They're all 2 thirds. So that means, yes, we are similar here. Uh, and we can write a statement of uh, similarity statement here. So if we wanted to write a similarity statement, now they've color coded it, uh, we could say A, B, C, D is similar to, and now I can just follow along the colors. Um, so M, L, P, wait, let's <laughs> see, 124, yeah, M, L, P, N. Yes, there we go, MLPN. All right, so I think I got them all right, right? So green to green, A, B, and then I went to blue. So M, L, and then, yep. I find it a little, a little tricky when I've got to look at different orientations, right? And you can also, we can also just make sure our angles match up too. That's the other way. So we yeah, had actually could write over here. So I didn't have to go along the sides at all. I could have just looked at my angle measures that are congruent because they're in order. A, B, C, D, M, L, L, M, M, L, P, N. So there we go. All right. 
So I have a question for you, and then I'm going to go over the answer. Which polygons are always similar? So we have rectangles, squares, trapezoids, triangles, isosceles right triangles, right triangles, regular polygons, equilateral triangles, and trapezoids. So I, I have a question for you on the Nearpod, and you pick the ones that you think. All right, they're always similar, and then I'll go over it, and we'll see how you did. All right, so I'm looking for you to try and figure it out on your own, uh, and then you can see how many you got right. Okay, all right, see you in the next podcast. Bye.